finally have green in the garden. This is Italian Arum and the snowdrops have finally come up. I don't have anything else coming up. I wish I had crocuses and daffodils, but they haven't emerged yet. Um, the irises made it through, but everything else is looking pretty sleepy yet. Welcome to Pain Falls, <laughs> Sandy Miller here. So I had my pine trees taken out uh, two weeks ago and we've had some pretty typical Ohio weather. It's been cold. We had one night it went down to 16 degrees. So I just let these chips sit here. I did not, I didn't want to lock the frozen, the freeze into the ground. So we're, we had a warm day yesterday. We've got a warm day today. So I'm starting to spread this. These are super fresh, <laughs> right from the chipper. Um, a lot of pine and I have um, a lot of acid loving plants. So as long as you're mulching around deep rooted established plants, put this on your tree root or on your tree roots around the base of your trees. I have some fruit trees. This is going to go on. I've got some rhododendron, some azaleas and some blueberry bushes. And this pile, I need about two to three inches to cover it. It's finely unfrozen so I can move it pretty easily. Um, and the wheelbarrow season has begun. <laughs> so when I get this mulched, um, I'm mulching around some, all those hydrangeas that I replanted. I need, we've had a lot of rain. So I'm trying to keep the moisture in the ground, keep the roots a little bit cool. Um, lots of projects going on here on this little tiny half acre. Um, I've removed a lot of plants. And so towards the end of the day, when this gets gone, I'll do a walkabout and you can see what's been going on for the last two weeks. Hi guys, um, Sandy Miller and Payne Falls again, we're zoned 5B. I'm up on the shores of Lake Erie and um, it's been an unusually warm spring. We've had, I've had, I'm so far ahead of the game it's ridiculous. So the last two videos ago I took out um, a pen, a hydrangea that was here. In fact I think there were two of them. Dug them out, I've put them in the back. There's been a lot of stuff going on here and I decided to put asparagus in. It wasn't my original plan to do that but we, we have just the best soil. So you can see, I have sandy, loamy soil, and I've amended this soil for 30 years, so it's just got so much loam. It's really nice soil. Um, if I were to buy another house, the first thing I'd do is stick a shovel in the ground <laughs> to see what kind of soil it is. Um, so I have been, I'm gonna plant 12 crowns of, um, these are Jersey Giant, I don't know if you can see them or not. They're Jer Jersey Giant Asparagus. And so when you get them, and I just picked these up at the local um, garden center, and you got three two-year-old roots for $3. And um, that seemed really reasonable to me. So we'll see if these go or not. This is a total experiment. I've run hot and cold with asparagus in the past, but um, I've never had a full patch. I've always plugged it in here and there and then somebody mows over it every year. Not me. <laughs> so um, the ones that have remained are good, sturdy, strong plants. So this whole bed is going to be designated for asparagus. I wish more people would plant asparagus. This will grow up three to five feet. It's great screening. You can eat it. It's not like bamboo where you can't control it. Um, but I won't be able to eat it for a couple years. It'll, it's because these are two-year-old roots. Um, you really shouldn't cut off of them till year four or five. I really like to give them a good head start. So I've trenched out the back. I've got a good six to eight inch trench and I'm going to do three rows of four and we'll see what happens. And then I'm, it, traditionally, I would not plant these till April, but they showed up at the garden center. They're way early. And when I got these out of the bags, they were dry. So if you're thinking about growing asparagus, go buy it now and hydrate it. Um, you, can, you can keep it going.
but I'm going to take, and then I'll cover it over with um, mulch. I'll cover it over with compost. And I am failing terribly at my no dig plan. Um, I had such high hopes. <laughs> it's like teaching a dog new tricks, a very old dog new tricks. Um, I came from the garden, traditional garden industry, uh, landscaping. So I prepped this soil and there were so many roots in the soil and probably what I should have done is laid cardboard and then laid compost on top of it. But I didn't do that because it was halfway through and I went, oh, maybe that's not the right way to do it. So anyway, I'm gonna plant these up and when I get the bread bed prepped, um, I'll be back. I'm back, I've got almost all my things planted, but one of the things that I dug up that I wanted to show everybody is a blister beetle. And you might have them in your neck of the woods, you might not. Um, I'm trying to see, see if you can see it or not. So this is, and this guy survived the winter, which is so depressing. <laughs> Tells you how mild the winter was. They feed off of grasshopper eggs, but what's really bad, they're emitting right now, see that orange dot? That fluid reacts and causes a blister on your skin or of any animal that would try to eat this. They have no known predators. My chickens wouldn't even eat these. So when I see the robins won't eat them, um, they're, they're just, I find them occasionally. I don't, three years ago, I had a billion of them. And then they kind of subsided and went away. And maybe we didn't have as many grasshoppers, I don't know. But anyway, if you get these, I try to get rid of them because I, I just don't want them in the garden. And the chickens are coming and my dog is here. Um, they look like they're in the ant family but look it up online, it's called a blister beetle, and I don't want it. <laughs> so he is going to be in the compost pile. We'll at least put him in the compost pile. But see all that orange? And those are eggs. So this one was getting ready to uh, lay eggs. Yay, gardeners are winning. <laughs> okay, back to the asparagus. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm on my last row and I thought I would show you how I'm planting these asparagus roots. And why you have to water them in. So this is a crown. And see all these, those are all roots. So you make a little mound and your trench has to be fairly um, deep, six to eight inches deep. Make a mound spread the roots out over the mound and then bring it in around the mound. Then, I always water them in because watch what happens. So the reason I do that is to eliminate air pockets. Air pockets probably kill more plants than anything else, more so than overwatering, more so than over fertilizing, air pockets. So when you get your asparagus root in the ground and you know there are no air pockets, you want to put two to three inches of soil over the top of it. Pat it up and say good night. <laughs> so, so I'm going to finish off this row and then I'll cover it over with uh, leaves. Okay, so as promised, um, I thought I'd show you some other things that are going on. This is my cold frame. I built it, oh gosh, a year and a half ago. And I'm finally getting um, a pretty good workout. So most of these were started, these were all started a week ago. And I've got Italian kale, uh, or Tuscan kale, dinosaur kale, uh, red Russian kale, black stem kale, two containers of black seeded Simpson. Um, this also is kale coming up. So I was worried about damping off, but they're doing okay. I have leeks and onions started, but as of yet, I see no life. It may, may, might need CPR. I have peas started here. Um, they're Oregon mammoth sugar snaps. And then in this one, uh, this holds so many tiny little seeds. So I have a popsicle stick up and labeled with each variety that's there. 
and I just planted these last night, so we'll see how they um, how they fare. These all went through, we hit a night of 16 degrees and everything is still living that I planted, so I'm very impressed. Um, it's not a hotbed, it's a cold frame. There's no horse manure in it. Um, it gets the morning sun. The windows were gifted to me by another gardener. Thank you, Mari Keating. <laughs> So if you want, we'll take a walk through and I can show you what else is going on in the garden. So the garlic is coming up. Those green shoots are very encouraging. So the big pile of wood chips that I had from the pine trees, these are all blueberry plants and they got probably a good two to three inches of mulch. Blueberry plants are shallow rooted, but I did this a couple years ago and boy, they sprang back to life. So there's a lot of new growth on these. Um, so they look good. Compost has been spread. The beds are getting ready. This bed hasn't been touched yet. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. Um, one of the interesting things that happened I forgot beets. The beets are in the ground. I'm digging out raspberries. Raspberries need to be moved out of this garden. These were white raspberries. I didn't care for them, so they're just getting pitched. <laughs> this is an asparagus bed. This is all asparagus. And then each of the holes on this side have strawberry plants. And I need to move some more strawberry plants in the um, cement block holes. They're filled with compost. They dry out pretty quickly, so you have to stay on it or they die. <laughs> so I have heritage raspberries in the back. <clears throat> These were potatoes last year, so this year peas will go in here. And that's a pretty good combination for me. I did not, I really didn't dig it. Uh, the potatoes were covered in straw, so they literally were on top of the ground. Um, and then I have just, and there were very few weeds, so all I've done is mulch over, or compost over it. These are currants. There's a red currant. They're both red currants. The one currant on the right is dead. La morte. So it needs to go. These are gooseberry bushes that I thought I killed. And they got moved to the inside last year uh, because the deer ate them to the ground. And I moved them on a hot day, thought I had watered them in. They looked just like this all last summer. And I thought, oh, well, I'll dig them out in the spring. I cut one of the um, pieces of bark off, or one of the branches off, and it's green, and I have new buds coming up. So my fingers are crossed that the gooseberries actually made it. So that's exciting. I have some black currants in the back, and then this will all get, there were peas here last year, and I had a border of lettuce. I still have some carrots that I'm letting go to seed, and um, I'd like to collect the seed. So that's it on the inside of this garden. Um, this holds a lot of food. Down this middle area, there will be beans, onions, um, kale. A lot of the things that are in the cold frame are gonna get transferred right into here. Now, that big pile of wood chips that I started this morning, it took me about two and a half hours to move that pile. And this is what I've done. So all, this is about two, two to three inches deep. These are fresh. This tree was cut down three weeks ago. They've been sitting in the driveway. And before everybody freaks out, <laughs> you'll notice that I've only done the back of the bed. The front of the bed, I'll be planting um, comfrey and some other, some other things. There is landscape fabric underneath because I had reclaimed this a couple years ago from Swedish Ivy. And now all that will get pulled out because all this will get planted with herbs and um, things that the deer won't eat, smelly things. So all this got mulched today. That whole two pine trees equaled all this mulch and the blueberries. Those are the hydrangeas that got moved. These are the azaleas that I said I was going to move that I didn't. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of what's going on. Um, doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. It's a lot of work. So the electric fence I've left on all winter, otherwise it rusts. So 
so it's the end of the day. <laughs> and I am so happy. The wood pile, the wood chips are gone, they're distributed. It's beer 30 to my family vacationing in Florida. I had a better day. <laughs> I really did. I got things planted. I got uh, wood chips distributed. The biggest reason to move the wood chip pile, I have a show next weekend and I couldn't back my van into the studio to load up. So this is fabulous. So anyway, it's spring. Um, I think we're having an early spring. Get your knees dirty, put your boots on, and get outside because it's beautiful. Um, I had a Cooper's Hawk all afternoon keeping me company and um, it's been a good day. So happy Sunday, happy full moon. It's arrived and the frenetic energy is just beginning. So uh, I'll be planting more seeds tonight in the studio and um, have a great week, everybody.